Good morning, everybody. How's everybody doing this morning? I am, I'm excited about this morning, but that's not exactly the words I'm looking for. I think I am totally blown away this morning by what God wants to share with us this morning. It is amazing to me when I get in his presence, how overwhelming he is. Today, we're going to be talking about how you are fully known by God, but deeply loved. And I'm not sure that I'm going to be able to find the words to be able to express what I'm going to try to express this morning, but I am overwhelmed by God's presence this morning, and I'm going to do my best. I want you to know that you are fully known by God. I mean fully, your thoughts, your intentions, everything, those things you are hiding from humanity, he fully knows you. But here's the thing, he deeply loves you, loves you deeper than you're even capable of loving. And that's what I'm going to try to talk about today. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Francine Ivy. I'm with Consumed by the Call Ministries. We do these daily devos each weekday morning. I want to welcome my live viewers. Thank you for joining me. Hello, hello. I love you all too. Thank you, thank you. I also want to welcome our new media, which is our podcasters. Welcome. Thank you for coming and joining us. Please share us with your friends. Let us know that... Um, let everybody know that we're out there. Any of you enjoying the podcast? Um, I'm enjoying that ability to be able to just listen whenever um, I am out and about. And uh, video is kind of heavy when you're driving or traveling or whatever. And so it's just a little easier. And maybe, maybe it's just easier when you're putting your makeup on or whatever to listen to the podcast. But I try to get those up every week as well. Those of you who watch this video on Facebook, but you are replay users, um, we want to let you know you are welcome here, that you are just as much a part of us. Let us know that you're watching. If you are a first-time podcaster, first-time viewer, or first-time live viewer, we want to know that too. We love it. We have become a family here at CBC. It's one of the things that I love the most is that um, you guys seem to know each other now. You pray with each other. I've even watched you message each other um, outside of the CBC page. I love that, and that's what God wants. He wants community. Now, let me say hello to everybody. Hi, Catherine. Good morning, Stephanie. I sure have missed you. I've missed you too. Good morning. Good morning. Penny's on Android. Good morning, Chad. Pastor Chad. Yay. Chad is a pastor over in North Carolina and my Oh my goodness, we've been friends a long time. I'm not even going to say how long because that would tell everybody my age, right? <laughs> Hi, Chad. I love you and I love Carol Ann. Good morning, Felice. Good morning, Jennifer, Stephanie, Rachel. Yes, you love the podcast. Me too. Me too. I'm enjoying that new venue and we have a lot of already listeners starting over there. Hey, Leah, how are you from Palm Harbor, Florida? Yay, thank you, thank you. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hi, Kitty, where are you, girl? Are you out traveling today? Good morning. Yay, is Mason with you, Penny? Hi, Mason, just in case you're there. Yes, there it is, I see that Mason's there. Hey, Peggy, how are you? Brandy Lynn, rocking this morning, amen, amen. Ah, Kitty's in New Mexico. Now I see it, Kitty. Sorry, I'm rolling back now. Hi, Maggie. Felice. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Maggie Duncan. Woohoo! How's everybody doing? Good morning. Hey, Jessica. How are you? Yay. Let me roll it back to see if I can see some more comments here. Uh, I miss you guys. I wish I could have come in this weekend. I really wanted to this weekend and just wasn't able to get going, but I'm hoping to come back to NC and see everybody. Yay. Good morning. Claudia has her coffee. Me too, girl. I do. This morning I woke up a little sleepy and I was able to get my coffee. You guys have seen this. This has become my favorite cup. Revival in a cup, right? It's actually the Bethel Music Cup. Yeah. Have y'all been loving the, um, do y'all love Bethel? I love Bethel Hillsong. Um, the new Hillsong. Oh my goodness, you guys. The new Hillsong um, CD. Um, there is more. Have y'all been listening to that? It has New Wine on it, which is an incredible song. And uh, Who I Am, incredible song. Love it, love it, love it. Um, but it's, it's one of my favorite new CDs. Colton Washington, hey Julie, I got to meet you. You guys, I love it when I get to meet you guys. And I got to have dinner with Julie on the ship. Enjoyed it so, so, so much. 
And uh, Julie, um, let's see, you have a ranch in Washington and um, her daughter loves horses. Her, um, her son is going to be an engineer. I just love it. I love it. Yay. Awesome. Hi, Christina. How are you? Welcome. Welcome. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Let's jump in here because I know many of you are on your way to work and you've got to get going. Um, like I said, God has overwhelmed me with this thought this morning. I actually saw it on a t-shirt on Facebook and just began to ponder the thought a few weeks ago fully known, deeply loved. I am fully known by God. I mean, it's almost scary how much he knows. He knows my thoughts. He knows my intentions. When you read the Bible, he would just literally know the thoughts of the crowd around him. And sometimes that overwhelms me. I don't know about you. You may have perfect thoughts, but oh my goodness, my thoughts get crazy. Sometimes absolutely crazy. Upper Room has awesome worship music too. Awesome. I will have to check that out, Sharon. I would love that. Yeah, you guys share. If you have some music that you love, Pop that up there. Let people know because no, there is nothing like worshiping an amazing worship music. And uh, I know this morning I needed it. I woke up in that kind of feeling, that blah feeling. Have you ever had it? You just woke up blah. And I just thought, I need to be in your presence this morning. And music is one of those things that does that for me. Um, anyway, but I, knowing that God fully knows me, my thoughts, my intentions, those things that I think I have hidden away from everybody else, God fully knows me. Does that make, I mean, does that make you uneasy? Like it makes me uneasy. It totally makes me uneasy. But then God brings in that second line, but I am deeply loved, deeply loved. And you guys, I hope to explain that to you this morning, that you are so deeply loved. And the, uh, the closest that I can get is I will never forget when I first had my first child, Reagan, and when that doctor laid her in my arms, I was overwhelmed with the amount of love that I had for her. She hadn't done a thing for me. As a matter of fact, babies are probably the most self-centered things ever. They never think of whether or not you've had enough sleep when they wake you up in the middle of the night. They, they, all they do is cry, change me, feed me, um, hold me. It is never about you, right? It's a totally self-centered little human, yet you are so in love with that child. I would stare into those chestnut brown eyes and it would overwhelm me. And God began to share with me, Francine, that's how I look at you. That's how I look at you. And I know that you're needy. And I know that you don't do everything right. But I love you so much. And I want him to say that. And I want you to know that. That he is saying that to you, Awilda. He's saying that to you, Penny. He's saying that to you, Chad. That I love you so much. You do not have to perform for me. For me to love you the way I love you. You are so deeply loved. You are fully known. Yes, you are fully known, but I love you. And I, I remember when I first gave my life to Christ, the very first book, the very first Christian book I ever picked up was The Applause of Heaven by Max Lucado. And if you have not read that book, I encourage you to pick that book up and fully read it. But it was the first time that I realized that Jesus loved me and that when I failed, he wasn't looking at me shaking his head in judgment. He was looking at me just like I look at my kids with a hand reached out saying, come on, baby girl, you've got this. We can do this. Come on, get up. He was my biggest fan, I found out, that he applauded me when I, when I did something right and he encouraged me when I failed. That's who Jesus is. You are deeply loved by him. You are fully known and deeply loved. And then the next book, also a Max Lucado book, I just love the way he, read, he um, writes and the way it reads. And it is, He Still Moves Stones. And this whole book is about what it's like for each individual individual character in the Bible and how their life did a, a 180 degree turn when he would and when they would face Jesus like each character here was their life and then they met Jesus and there was their life it was incredible he still 
moves stones in your life. And if you feel like right now heaven cannot hear you because you have a big stone in the way, God still moves stones. Jesus still moves stones. He will move that out of the way. He wants to fully know you and he wants to deeply love you. Please let him reach out to your heart and do so. When I think about the stories in the Bible that just show that, there's the woman at the well. Here's a woman totally broken, totally broken. She's at the well. She's gone to the well at a time in the middle of the afternoon at the heat of the day. Why is she there? Because she doesn't want to see anybody. Her life has been so broken. She searched for love in all the wrong places. She has found rejection. She has found herself in a place that she never thought she would be. You guys, this, when people end up in these positions, they didn't make those choices on purpose. They had no idea. That's not their desire. That was not their dream for their life. And here she is so broken that she has gone to the well to retrieve water in the middle of the afternoon at the heat of the day hoping to see no one but you know what god's never gonna leave you there he is not gonna leave you there he's gonna meet you right there in all of your brokenness fully known but deeply loved and there was jesus going out of his way to show up at a well for one woman for one woman his disciples are sent away to get food and there he sat and he says to her give me something to drink And she is so upset that he's there that she sarcastically says to him, why do you talk to me? Why? I mean, she begins to push him away immediately. Why are you talking to me, a woman? I'm a Samaritan. You're a Jew. You have nothing to do with me. I mean, she is immediately trying to push him away, but Jesus loves her so much. He pushes back in and he says, you know what? If you knew who was talking to you, you'd ask me for something to drink. Then she looks back at him and says, you don't have anything to draw. Do you think you're better than Jacob who gave us this? Well, she has no idea. She's talking to the Messiah, to the Messiah. And this is where it happens. This is how much he loves us, you guys. He fully knows us. He deeply loves us. He already knows the mess that her life is in. And here comes the gentle, loving confrontation. You see, when you are deeply known, when you are deeply loved and you are fully known by Jesus, he's going to confront those things in your life. Not because he's trying to shame you, not because he's trying to um, uh, uh, prove something. He is there because he wants to set you free. And in Jesus Christ, when we are free, we are set free indeed. It says that it is for freedom that we are set free. We are free. And so he can gently confronts her and he says, she says, I want some of that water. You got that kind of water that will never make me thirsty again. I want some of that water. And here comes the gentle confrontation. Go and get your husband. Now, Jesus knows that She doesn't have a husband right now. And as a matter of fact, he knows that she's had five in the past. And now this one is not her husband that she's living with because she's pretty much done. She's pretty much done about being loved. And so he says, go and get your husband. And she says, I have no husband. And here's where the gentle confrontation is. Let's read it right here. It says, Yes, you have well said, I have no husband, for you have five, you have had five husbands, and the one whom you now have is not your husband. In that you spoke truly. The woman said to him, Sir, I perceive that you're a prophet. Our fathers worshiped on the mountain, and you Jews say that in Jerusalem is the place where one ought to worship. Do you know why she's asking this question? She wants a relationship with God. She is so empty on the inside that she wants a relationship with God. So immediately when she realizes there's something special about this man that's talking to me at the well, she begins to say, where do I find God? Do I have to go to the mountain? Where do I find God? Jesus says to her woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We know what we worship. For salvation is of the Jews. But the hour 
is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father is seeking such to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that the, Ma that the Messiah is coming who is called Christ. When he comes, he will tell us all things. So what Jesus is saying to her, but the hour is coming where true worshipers will worship him in spirit and truth for the father is seeking such to worship God is spirit. He said, the day is coming when you're not going to need a mountain or in this place or in that place. It's not going to be about the place. It's going to be about the spirit. You're going to be able to worship him fully. The day is coming. Jesus knew the day is coming when he's going to stretch forth his arms and he's going to die on a cross and the veil is going to be rent from the top to the bottom. And because of what Jesus Christ does for us as he takes our sins away and gives us his righteousness, we're able to walk boldly into the holy of holies. There's no more veil nothing breaking us apart nothing taking us away from him we're going to be able to walk boldly into his presence he knows the day is coming and she says i know the messiah is coming when he comes he will tell us all things and jesus says to her what was she asking earlier she was asking sir i perceive that you are a prophet she is asking i want to know where god is and here he says to her in verse 26, Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. I who speak to you am he. You see, God fully knows you. He fully knows you and he deeply loves you. Deeply loves you. He will find you and meet you where you are. But he won't leave you there. He won't leave you there. He'll gently confront you. The next story is the woman caught in adultery. Beautiful mercy is what God gave me over this story. Here is a woman. She's caught in the midst of adultery. The Pharisees grab her right out of that, throw her at his feet. What would the holy Jesus who fully knows her, knows her sin, what would he do? I want you to notice his be the, beautiful, the beauty of the story. He begins to kneel down and write on the ground. The, her accusers are standing around with big rocks in their hand ready to condemn her to, a, to a, a stoning, to a death, right? To condemn her to death. They're trying to catch Jesus and in, in heresy. They're trying to get him because his mercy offends them. But he begins to stoop and draw on the ground. Then he stands up and looks at them and says, If you, you anybody without sin can throw the first stone. Then he kneels down and, and begins to draw again. But well, here's what I love. They begin to leave. They know there is no way none of them can throw the first stone. And they begin to leave. And as they all leave, Jesus looks at her and says, Woman, where are your accusers? And she looks around and she realizes she's not dying today. Not today. And she looks around and there are no accusers. And Jesus looks at her, the only one in that crowd that could have condemned her. Listen to me. The only one in that crowd that could have condemned her. And he says, and I do not condemn you either. This is absolutely beautiful mercy. And he says to her, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Go and sin no more. I, I, I can't. I, I, it overwhelms me at the amount of mercy that God has. And listen, children of God, we need to have it too. We need to have it too. Beautiful mercy. We are the representation of Christ in this world. And we need to have beautiful mercy too. Go and sin no more, he says to her. Then the woman being uh, washing his feet. This is what God showed me. This is radical forgiveness and sweet honor here is jesus in the home of a pharisee this woman pushes past the the bad looks and the the rejection that she feeling that she is feeling because she needs to get at the feet of jesus she begins to weep enough tears to wash his feet and she begins to dry them with her hair Jesus begins to perceive what Simon is thinking. Simon the Pharisee is standing over there and in his thoughts he's saying, what kind of prophet is he that he would allow a woman, such a woman, to touch him? 
I can't even imagine that kind of, of judgment that is, is in that room. She had to be feeling it as she began to weep and worship and wash his feet and dry them with her hair because she loved him so much. Then Jesus goes and does something that is incredible. I love it. He begins to ask Simon, knowing what Simon's um, heart is like and says, you know, there are two debtors. There's two people who owe money. One that owns, uh, that owes 500 denarii and the other 50. And when they had nothing to which to pay, um, the, the creditor freely forgave them both. He said, tell me which of them loves him more. And of course, Simon said, I suppose the one who'd been forgiven much. And that's exactly what Jesus says. He said to him, you are right. You have rightly judged. Then he turned to the woman and said to Simon, do you see this woman? I entered your house. You gave me no water for my feet, but she has washed my feet with her tears and wiped them with the hair of her head. You gave me no kiss, but this woman has not ceased to kiss my feet since I came in. You did not anoint my head with oil, but this woman has anointed my feet with fragrant oil. Therefore, I say to you, her sins, which are many, which are many. He doesn't, he doesn't sugarcoat it. Her sins are many. They are forgiven. Radical forgiveness right there. I mean, it's so radical that the people in the room said, who is this that forgives sins? It is so bold that he does this, but he, he says her sins are forgiven for she was forgiven much. So she loved much. But those of you who have been forgiven little will love little. She, she is honored. You guys, she's in the word of God. Jesus stops to use her as a lesson to the Pharisees. He honors her above the Pharisees that are in the room. Beautiful, radical forgiveness and sweet honor is what he gives. You see, Jesus knows you fully. And I know that just like me, it's got to make you as nervous as it does me to know that he knows my heart and my intentions. He knows my fears, my rejections. He knows when I get angry. He knows when I, when I feel doubtful, when I feel like um, I'm falling apart, when I, when I feel like I, I don't have the faith that I should. He fully knows me. But here's the thing. At the same time that he fully knows me, he deeply loves me. He deeply loves me. That's what I want you to understand. Yes, Jesus fully knows you. And he knows the sin in your life. And he knows the, the, the times when you, you have failed him. He knows the times when you have fallen down. But the Jesus, the Savior of the world that we know, stands above you saying, Baby girl, son, hop up. You got this. I'm your biggest fan because he deeply loves you so today know that God yes fully knows you but also walk today knowing that you are deeply deeply loved I love you guys so so much I'm so looking forward I'm hoping that many of you will come to the retreat in September I want to be with you guys. I want to worship with you guys. I want to lay my hands on you and pray over you. It's going to be an incredible weekend. Go get your tickets now. There's only a hundred spots that we're going to have because of the, the lack of room. Um, but um, I hope you'll get to come. I hope you'll rearrange some schedules. I want to be with you guys. I really want to spend a weekend with you guys. It would be an incredible time. Go to the, go to the Facebook, go to the website. Find it, become a part of it, come to the weekend. It's going to be incredible. If you want to fully prepare for the weekend, you need to go through the Bible study, Calling Over Comfort, completely free Bible study, you guys. It's right there on it. If you live in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, be watching because I'm going to be teaching this Bible study. I'm going to take a group through the 12-week Bible study here in town um, and uh, live. Uh, so I will be doing that. If you're, if you're local, um, you may want to become a part of that. If not, you need to get on that Bible study and do that Bible study and come in September. It, I, I'm telling you, you're, you're going to hate it if you miss it. And not only that, you're, you're, I think God's about to move. And I want, I want to fill that place. I want a hundred people to come. I want, I want to see what God will do with a hundred on fire 
calling over comfort, children of the Most High God, ready, ready to go and do what God's called them to do. It's going to be incredible. I love you guys. You are, listen to me today. I want you to know it. You are fully known, but you are deeply loved. I'll talk to you guys later.